So this is the conclusion to the four-part series I had on making this live edge walnut table. The bulk of this last video part is going to detail um, the actual finishing of the table. And since this was an oil finish, um, as well as I rubbed out the finish once it was fully cured and then waxed it, something like that takes about two weeks to do. It's not necessarily a time-intensive process, as far as work goes, it's more of um, a process of waiting for all of the, the pieces to dry and all the parts to dry with the oil on them before continuing on to consecutive steps. So if you want to do a finish like that, just be well aware of the fact that it does take a fair amount of time. And that's actually a pretty, a pretty short amount of time. If this was to have been done in the winter time, it would have taken a lot longer for all of those parts to dry. But if you have the time for it, it is pound for pound the nicest finished, and this is probably the nicest finished piece that's ever come out of this shop. Um, the top of the table right now is so smooth it almost feels like, like glass. And it's a great finish for an environment with anyone that has a small shop like myself um, that's not dust free. Because once you have all the oil on there, you're going back through and rubbing the surface and you can remove a lot of the the dust particles that get uh, put trapped in the finish as, as you go through the process. Um, right now the, the top and the legs and everything are completely clear without any blemishes so I couldn't be happier. So the extra special nice thing about joints like this is um, when you dry fit them together they're usually pretty square right off the bat and if they're not they're very easy to get square. So once I had this in place, I made some marks and I cut a quarter inch groove on the bottom of three of my pieces. That would leave a little bit of a gap on the back side of the panels, but it didn't really matter because you would never see it since the drawer would be set inside the table. Once I had that done, I reassembled the, the entire piece and then I marked on the front of the the um, pull-out drawer where the, that groove was going to be. This was important because since it's live edge you could see it does not come fully down to the bottom so it was easiest to cut it into the three backers and then and then mark it. So for this one I don't want to cut into those um, joints on the side. You could see I showed it in the video where it would cut through. You don't want to see that. So for this one I'm lowering it onto my dado stack and then lifting it up and cutting that groove and since that groove is going to be circular or arched on the edge because of the table saw blade, I could go through and just clean it up with a chisel. So I'll have the exact same groove, but it won't ruin the front joint by having um, a, a mark in there. Could cut the backer once everything is in place, just adding the depth of the groove into that and cutting the backer, and then I could glue this all into place. Now the plus side of dovetails, besides the fact that they look nice, and that um, just the way the pins set in the tails it's very hard to pull the drawer apart is also that with all of that extra gluing area it makes it that much stronger all that surface area that you can add glue to just makes it um, substantially stronger this drawer will most likely never come apart as you can see I'm just adding glue to it I can hammer it together um, because there's through dovetails in the back and and um, blind dovetails in the front it was a, it's a little difficult putting it together because you can't just slide your panel in but you could see once I have it in there just cleaning it all up checking for square and then um, I'll test it in the in the container as well before I let this set but that's pretty much done just taking a chisel and chamfering all the edges so that it slides nicely in that drawer box opening there's no sharp edges to catch and then once the glue dries, I could go through and, and just sand it, sand it down. So then at this point, I'm finally going to cut the top down to size. And since the edge and the front edge and the back edge are keeping a live edge look, I like to not I, I like to not square off the ends. I like to add a little bit of a dimensional cut to the end so you can see I kicked it out in the front and the back and on the other end, edge I'll kick it in just so that it looks a little more like a natural cut. If you have a live edge piece like this and you just square off the edges sometimes it really just doesn't look look good. So by, by cheating in on one edge and cheating out on the other 
it, it keeps a little bit more dimension into the piece and it looks a little more natural natural for the top so I had a tiny little check on this one piece which I was thinking of just ignoring because it was so small but it went all, almost completely through the top and I didn't want it to grow over time so I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because I already have a video on my channel showing you how I made this butterfly jig but basically it's it's a jig that utilizes two different sets of bushings so you can cut um, a negative and a positive piece with your router to make perfect butterflies so that's what I'm doing with the first one I'm going through and cutting the negative in the top of the walnut you could see what that looks like there and then I could just remove the excess in there with a chisel super easy work you can pop out all that excess and then clean up the bottom with a chisel as well this is a really small crack so I didn't go super deep with it and then once you change out the bushing you could cut the positive this is a people piece of maple I'm cutting the positive out of which is a very common um, contrasting wood to use with walnut And then once I have that cut out, I can just send it through my table saw and I can knock out that maple, that maple butterfly, clean up the maple butterfly a little bit, clean up the edges of the um, negative in the walnut a little bit, and then set it in place. And it fits perfectly in there. So while that's drying, I also go through and add a little bit of epoxy to some of the hairline cracks in the top. These are really small cracks that I'm just filling with epoxy. I don't like to push the limits of epoxy um, because it can essentially delaminate from the wood when the wood shifts from seasonal humidity. So filling little hairline cracks is fine and that's what I prefer to use because then once you put the finish on it, it usually blends quite well. Once that patch was dry, I could go through and sand down that butterfly. And then I'll have a nice crisp, crisp, clean top. So to attach the top, I'm using figure eights. This is kind of my preferred method. So you kind of countersink a, I believe these are three quarter inch foster a bit, and then you remove the excess so that the, the figure eights can move. And then you could screw the figure eights in. You could see you, you countersink it just so they're flush with the top. And the whole point of these is they can move. So as that top shifts, especially since it's a solid piece of wood, it is gonna move. The figure eights can move with it as well. And then I could attach the tabletop. So the finish for this, I'm using a tongue oil finish. So that means it has um, some sort of varnish in it as well. It's not raw tongue oil. It has um, um, some sort of varnish in it is usually what they add. Every single company uses a different variation of that oil. But raw tongue oil will take a long time to, to cure, just like raw linseed oil will take a long time to cure. So if you use the premix finish, it cures a little bit uh, faster, as well as having a more durable finish because it has some varnish in it. So I'm just going through and adding a coat to all of my pieces. In between um, each coat, I'm sanding, and then I'll apply each coat as well with a white pad so it's a wet sand application this is one of the first times i've done this and i really liked this sort of application method because it it sands the piece as you're going and it leaves a nice clean finish so this ended up i ended up putting about five coats on this piece it's hard to tell but in my hand there's a, a wet um, synthetic pad that i'm using to apply this finish not just a regular rag and the other nice thing about this is it has no sort of fibers in it so there's no fibers left in your finish so that is what that looks like um, i go through this pretty quickly i mostly show just coating the top but this is about five coats of this oil on the whole piece and then once it's set up for about 10 minutes, I'll go through real quickly with a clean cloth and wipe off any excess oil. So then once that fully sets, I can uh, rub out the finish. But while I was waiting for that to cure, because it takes about a week for it to cure, which is about how long I waited for this, I made some of my own paste wax. Um, there's re many recipes for this online. The one I used was one part wax to three parts linseed oil kind of made a makeshift double double 
uh, boiler on here. It's just two cans, so the boiling water will be underneath the can with the oil and the beeswax in it, and it will melt it without burning it. Um, I'm doing this because since this is walnut, it's an open grain lumber, so if you put clear paste wax on it and it dries, it'll leave little white streaks in the grain. So you have to dye this a little bit, and I like to do this because the customer wanted um, and agreed to an oil, a wax finish. So by making this, I could then give them enough wax to last by far the lifetime of the table. So as they reapply wax as they feel fit, they'll have the proper coloring. So you can see I'm just using two oil-based paints. I use some burnt umber and some yellow to get um, a darker brown. It's just a little bit of paint I'm putting in there. It's oil-based because oil-based is actually um, contrived of a linseed oil. And then once it is mixed all together, I could pour into a little container. And you could see before I let it fully set up that it's pretty much a perfect match. You're you're mixing the colors by eye to, to get a good max, a, a good mix. So then once this tabletop is cured, and like I said, it took about a, a week's time. It really depends on what the temperature is like out for to, in order for that to do that. I'm putting a, a lubricating oil on there, which is basically water and some soap and then I'm sanding this with about 1200 grit sandpaper. I ended up taking it down to a thousand grit sandpaper to get the satin kind of um, flat finish I was looking for and this is what rubbing out the finish is. This is also one of the first times I've done this and I absolutely loved it. It makes the top of the piece and I did this on all the legs as well as the aprons feel almost like glass. It really really evens out the finish. So I sanded that with about a thousand grit until the sheen because that tongue oil finish left a little bit of a sheen so that gloss sheen was completely cut down to the satin flat sheen I wanted and then once that was done I put a, a liberal not a liberal a somewhat liberal coat of that wax I made on there I let that dry and then I buffed out the whole piece. Like I said I'm mostly showing the top but um, I did this to the drawer as well as the, the legs and the apron on the whole piece as well. And then this is what the finished piece looks like. I was really happy with the finish. Um, it came out a nice satin borderline flat finish, which is the, what the customer wanted. They didn't want a high gloss and it's completely smooth, um, beautiful, clear finish.